Which brings us to a beautiful lecture problem. I want you to draw out the Lewis structure of water and then determine that molecule's overall shape. Now, I'm not gonna answer this for you, but I will put a link floating over my head or in the description below in which I will take you through this. And as a warning, it is to an older video with terrible audio. This question asks us to draw the Lewis structure of water and then determine its shape. As I've discussed in an earlier video, to determine a, the Lewis structure of a compound, we first will write out the compound's formula, H2O, and we determine how many valence electrons each of the atoms in that molecule has. As you should recognize, each hydrogen has one valence electron, and there are two of them, and oxygen, being in group 6A of the periodic table, has six. Therefore, the total number of valence electrons we have to play with in this molecule is eight. Now what I have to do is establish the bonding pattern. It should be obvious that oxygen is going to be the central atom and it's going to be bonded to two individual hydrogen atoms as seen there. Unlike the uh, elements of the periodic table past row two, hydrogen only needs two electrons, so at this point each of those hydrogen atoms is fulfilled. I'll take my remaining electrons of my eight and I'll put them here. I now count up the total num number of electrons I've laid out in this uh, Lewis structure. I've got two, four, six, eight. I've used all of my electrons and uh, then I ask myself, does everything here feel like it has an octet, or in the case of hydrogen, that it has a two-tet? The answer is yes, so this is the correct Lewis structure for that molecule. The next thing this question asks is for us to determine the shape of this molecule. In order to look at that, we have to look more closely at this central atom, oxygen. It has actually four things around it. It has a hydrogen to the right, hydrogen to the left, a set of lone pairs, and another set of lone pairs. If you're going to have four things around a central atom, let's see if we can take a look at a model and determine a little bit more clearly what that geometry is going to look like. Much like we had in our earlier example of carbon tetrachloride, in the case of water, H2O, I have a central atom with four things around it. Unlike the carbon tetrachloride, not all four of those things are atoms. One of those things is a hydrogen, another is a hydrogen, and then the other two things are each one set of lone pair electrons. So I'm going to use this same central atom that I used before, except this time this represents our oxygen atom, not a carbon atom, as was the case earlier. It's now going to be bonded to two different hydrogens, and it doesn't really matter where I put them. I'll go ahead and put one there and one right there. If we look at that, you might ask, what is the shape of that? Well, this uh, is supposed to represent the end of where one of those lone pairs, so this would be one lone pair, this is another lone pair with no atom at the end of it. And then each of these is a set of uh, bonding pairs being, uh, or connecting the central oxygen to each hydrogen. So what is the shape of this thing? Well, if you're counting the lone pairs as contributing to the shape, then you would call that tetrahedral, just as is the case with the uh, carbon tetrachloride. If you're not counting those, in other words, if we could imagine us ignoring these uh, lone pairs and just looking at what's left, then I would count uh, or call this shape bent. You know, notice it looks like a bent shape. So this type of shape, the one in which we count all of the atoms and ignore the lone pairs and don't consider the lone pairs as contributing to the geometry, is called the molecular geometry. The shape of the uh, water molecule and its molecular geometry is bent. If, however, we count everything, including the lone pairs, uh, as contributing to the geometry, then the overall shape is considered tetrahedral. This type of uh, geometry, the one in which we count the lone pairs, is called electron domain geometry.